So again, the um, tree diagrams. All right, and, and listen, we're really going to work on the interruptions. Well, when I get started, that means you're sitting, paying attention, not getting up out of your seat, walking around. All right. I'm not kidding. All right. That's a distraction. All right, so here we go. Tree diagrams at the top. All right. Tree diagrams are used to illustrate the total number of possible outcomes. All right, the total number of possible outcomes. All right. Now, a tree diagram is a graphical way to show all of the possible outcomes in a situation or experiment. And again, come on, you got to listen. That's what I'm talking about. Don't be sidetracked right now because in a minute you're going to ask me a bunch of questions. All right, if you're not listening, I'm not waiting on you. That's what I'm telling you. All right. Now, the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. That's what I'm going to demonstrate over here. All right, that's what I'm going to demonstrate over here. All right. And an easy explanation of what we're doing is if I flip a coin twice, how many outcomes are possible? Most people kind of can figure it out. How many outcomes are possible? Two. Two. Good. How many? Two. Good. Four. Four. Good. Four. Four. What do you think? Four. Four. Two. Good. Four. Four. Anybody else? Four. All right. So we'll think about it, and I'll show you. Now, again, I, I used to not teach tree diagrams because I just thought it was easy. All right. But I then realized that the kids were not understanding really how to come up with these numbers and how they figured out the fundamental counting principle. All right. And again, the guy was brilliant in his observation because all it was was an observation. All right. So this is what we're talking about. We're going to flip a coin twice. All right. And when we flip a coin twice, what I want to try to do is I want to try to demonstrate to you that you're going to flip it the first time. And the first, it's going to come up what? Heads. And the second time you flip it, it's going to come up what? Heads. All right. That's one possibility. Does everybody agree with that? All right. Another possibility was when you flip the first time, it could come up what? No. Heads. The reason why we're going to go with heads is because we want to get all the possible outcomes. So you want to be organized. All right. So if you start out with heads, you want to say, okay, if it hits heads, the second flip could be a head or a what? Tails. tails. So this part right here would be tails. All right. And you abbreviate that as probably what? HT. Now, have we determined all the possibilities when you flip two coins if the first coin comes up heads? Yes. Have we done every possibility? Yes. And the answer is yes. Because it can either come up head with a head or head with a what? Tail. Tail. So that's it. Now, that's of course not the only possibility because what happens if you flip a coin and it comes up what? Tails. Tails. So you could have tails all right and then we start back with what again heads now why do we do this we do this because we're following a pattern we're following a pattern we did heads then we did heads and tails all right now we're going to start with tail and then we're going to go what again tails. heads and then tails so this would be abbreviated t <laughs> H, and then it could be what? Tails, and then what? Tails, and we'd abbreviate that what? We'd abbreviate that TT. All right. Now, again, that is listing it out. All right. That's not the actual tree diagram. So what I want to do now is I want to try to show you how we're going to draw a, t a tree diagram. And when you draw a tree diagram, you'll be able to see or you'll be able to recognize patterns. Because in a minute, oh, well, we just discovered that then there are how many outcomes here? Four. Four. All right. In a minute, we're going to do it with 
flipping it three times. All right, and if we flip it three times, we're going to figure out how many possible outcomes are there. And then I'm going to ask you, what if I flip it four times, what are the outcomes? And believe it or not, I can in my head list all the possible outcomes, all right, sequentially. All right, because I'm following a what? I'm following a pattern, right? And if you learn to follow a pattern, you'll understand and be able to recognize how to list things better if someone asks you to. All right, that's why I think a tree diagram is super important. All right, so the tree diagram, again, I like to talk about like this. I say like this is flip what? One. Flip one. So if you flip it once, you can either get a what? Heads or a what? Tail. All right, now we're going on to flip number what? Two. Two. Now look, here's how we break it off into branches now. If we break it off into branches, the second flip could be what also? Heads. Heads and then? Tails. Tails. So we put a what? H and then a what? A T. All right. Now we're going to branch off again. So this down here is going to be considered a what? Uh-huh. And it's going to be what? H and T. All right. And what you're supposed to recognize is this, guys. Watch now. The first choice is what? H, H. Good. Choice number two would be what? H, T. And what I'm trying to get you to picture is what? You're just traveling the branches. You start here, then you go down here. All right? Then choice number three is what? T, H. And then... Number four is what? There you go. And notice again, I'm trying to show you we're just following the branches. All right. And when you follow the branches, you can see the last column is the total number of possible outcomes. So there would be, in this case, four possible outcomes. All right. Now the answer is, let me show you something super important. All right, so here we go. So that is considered the tree diagram. All right, that's considered the tree diagram. All right, now let's just read real carefully question one and question two. It says, what is the probability of getting a tail on both flips? All right, what's the probability of getting tails on both flips? 25%. But when we do probability, generally it's a fraction. So instead of 25%, one fourth. So everybody's going to write down one fourth. Now, how did we know it was one fourth? Because we want both of them to be tails, and tails twice only comes up once out of how many? Four, Four times. All right. Now, how do we know? Or this is what happens. Well, I'll wait till the end. All right. I'll wait till the end before I show you this. So now, what's the probability of getting at least one tail? One half. One half. Uh -huh. What do you Three think? Fourths. Three fourths. Mm -hmm. One half, three fourths, three fourths. Again, you should recognize if we want at least one, it could be one or what? Two. All right. How many choices there is tails, at least one tails being flipped? How many? Three. So the answer to number two was three out of four. Now, if you say 75%, do I care? No, I just want you to know probability. We generally write it as a what? We generally write it as a fraction, not as a percentage. All right? What? That's just how the mathematicians do it. All right, you could also write it as a decimal. Generally, we don't write it as a percentage. All right, but this is a good review of everything. All right, you should be able to tell me that's 0.25, 1, 4, or 25%. Are you okay with that? All right. Now, what I want to do is I want everybody to go down to right here under example number one. All right. I'm going to kind of ignore example number one. But what I want you to do is I want you to try to draw the tree diagram for what happens if you flip the coin three times. All right. I want you to draw the tree diagram for what happens when you flip it three times. And then when you flip it three <coughs> times, I want to know how many possible outcomes are there. Can you tell me how many possible outcomes there are if you flip it three times? 
How many? Six. Six. Eight. 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 Twelve. Five. Nine. Four. Eight. Eight. Four. Eight. 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 All right, so now draw the tree diagram. All right, give you a second to draw the tree diagram. All right, obviously it's just flip one, flip two, flip three, just what we did. All right, and I'll draw it. Yes, you're drawing the tree diagram. Okay. If you're trying to. And then eventually what you're going to do is you're going to be able to see how easy it is to come up with all the different possibilities. All right. So here we go. So let's just take a look at how you start. So here would be, for example, flip number one. Flip number one, it could be either a what? Heads or a tail. And you're learning quickly that it's better to kind of space them out or it's going to be squished together. It's going to be kind of hard. What? I put B and G before Because you weren't listening to me. Right? I said, look, well, I'm, I'm skipping example one right now. I'm not doing that one. I just said, go down to that spot. Okay. All right? Because there's nowhere else to write. That's what I was saying. Okay? So I don't want BG, I want, even though really is there a difference between BG and heads and tails? No, it's the same. All right, but here's what I want you to do. We're doing flipping a coin three times. We're trying to figure out how many outcomes are possible. Somebody said six, somebody said eight, somebody said nine, somebody said four. So that's why it's going to be easy for you. All right. So now you flipped it once. Now we're going to flip it a what? Second time. And when you flip it a second time, it can be what? Heads or tails. When you flip it a second time, this one down here could be what? Heads or tails. All right. Now you got to flip it a third time. When you flip it a third time, it's going to be heads or tails. Heads or tails. Heads or tails. And then heads or tails. All right. That's why I kind of I like my iPad a little bit because I can kind of cheat a little bit and kind of spread it out so you can see it better. All right. Well, maybe I can. All right. So that's a little better. All right. Now, those right there represent your uh, three flips. Now, how many outcomes are there? There what? Everybody should be able to see that. Right? Now, if you're not sure, let's look at it. So your outcomes, look here, guys. This would be the first outcome, the second outcome, the third outcome, the fourth outcome, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. All right, is everybody with me? So what's the first outcome going to be? Mr. Varner, what's the first outcome? Thank you, sir. I appreciate you listening. H, H, H. What is the second outcome? H, H, T. H, H, T. You are awesome. Now, do you see how much easier it is to organize your thoughts now that you've got the tree diagram? Third. H, T, H. H, T, H. And the fourth. Tell me. No. Yes, HTT. Very good. All right. So just you're following the pattern, right? This one up here. Then the second line would be here, here. And then the third line, we'd say, uh oh, here. And then we'd say the fourth line is down here. See that, right? All right. So now what's the fifth outcome? THH. 
Come on, guys. The T H T T T H. Yeah. So now, what again? What you're supposed to be doing is this. What you're supposed to be able to doing is you should be able to see that visually in your head now. All right. It should be much easier for you to understand what I'm saying. All right. What are you doing now? Come on, hustle up, hustle up, hustle up. Bring the whole thing here if you need it. All right, so there are how many different outcomes? Eight. Now the question is, there is a relationship between the number of times we flip and how many outcomes there are. Or how many times are we flipping it? Now watch what this guy finally figured out. This represents the first flip, the second flip, and the third flip. Is everybody with me on that? How many outcomes are there on the first flip? Three. Two. Two. How many outcomes are there on the second flip? Four. Four. Two. Two. How many outcomes are there on the third flip? Two. 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 All right. So the question is, how did we get eight from two, two, two? Two, two. two cubed, or we could say two. Yeah, but I really want you, you're 100% right, but I really wanted you to see it's just 2 times 2 times 2. Even though, of course, that is 2 cubed. I'm not arguing with you. But I'm saying the guy figured out that to find the total number of outcomes, what do you do? You just multiply the possible outcomes. So what do I mean by that? There over here were two outcomes. Here there were two outcomes. And here there were two outcomes. So there were a grand total of how many different options? There were eight options. All right. Now, it would be hard for somebody to say, okay, if you flip the coin three times, what are all the outcomes? All right. And if you're not organized or if you don't know how to do the tree diagram, I would say there's really very little chance that you could say that without a tree diagram. Is everybody with me on that? That would be kind of hard to say. All right. Now, believe it or not, it's possible to do that if you're able to keep the letters organized in your head. All right. But for most people, that's what? That's very hard to do. It just takes practice. All right. So you can see when people list things out, all right, they have it in their head how they're seeing the tree diagram. Is everybody with me on that? All right. So there are eight possible outcomes when you flip the coin three times. So the next question is, if I said to flip it four times, if I said to flip it four times, there would be what? 16 outcomes. All right. And all we would have to do is put F4 down, and then we'd have to do a what? HT down every single one of those. All right. So what I'm showing you is this. Look right here. If I wanted to flip it a fourth time, right? This branch right here branches off to a what? Another what? H and T. This one would branch off as another what? So now if I wanted to say it would be H, 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 and then H, 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 what? T. Then it would be H, H, T, H, 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 T, T. Does everybody see what the pattern? This is what I'm trying to tell you. The pattern involved in counting, all right? It, it's an unbelievable task. But once you figure out the pattern, you can easily calculate the number of possibilities, all right? And eventually that's what we're gonna get into is show you the different formulas uh, for counting. Um, but this is called the fundamental counting principle, the fundamental counting principle. You always just multiply your options, all right? So let's take briefly a look at these two children which I think I already said, so I'm just going to highlight this and move this out of the way a little bit. All right. I think I kind of said this. I said that uh, if you have two children, you have what? Two outcomes, right? So if you only have two outcomes, is this really any different than flipping a coin? No. All right. Hopefully everybody in here could be able to say, well, if you had two children, you could have what? You have four outcomes. Now, some people don't understand four outcomes because they are looking at boy, boy is one outcome. 
but then when they see boy girl and girl boy is that the same outcome no. no that is not the same outcome that's hard for people to see sometimes everybody agree with me all right b g is different than what g b so if you said what's the probability of getting or have having two boys you would say it's what one out of four What's the probability of having two girls? One out of four. But then what is the probability of having a boy and a girl? One half. One half. Exactly right. Because that occurs what? Twice. All right? Yes. Why is called Very good question. Because if you have a boy first and a girl second, granted you have one boy and one girl, but they are what? They're as different as if you said girl, boy. You with me? Because these, this is not the same as this. You understand what I'm saying? So if you have two kids, your chances of having, bless you, your chances of having a boy, girl are better than two boys, right? Or it's better than having what? Two girls. But if I said, what's the chances of having both boys and both girls or a boy and a girl, they would be what? Exactly the same, right? Just like if you had, for example, all boys in your family, right? If you had all boys, there is a what? Only a one in eight chance for that to happen. There's a one in eight chance to, for that to be happening if you had three kids, all right? If you had four kids, it'd be what? There's one out of 16 that has all boys. Wow. See what I'm saying? All right. Yes, sir. How would you multiply, like, so if you had, like, three children, right? Like, right. you have B, B, B. How would you multiply that? So what I'm saying is this. Here's how you want to think about it. All right. You're having three kids. If you're having three kids, your options are either what? boy or a girl. So there's two options here, two options here, and two options here. That's why you do the fundamental, fundamental counting principle, which says you multiply your options. So there are eight possibilities. That's exactly correct. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. For every single one, could you just see, like, like, how many girls or, like, children are ever? Like, and then just, um, do Okay, so now she's asking a pretty good question about what happens if you just, you know, the problem is we're talking about what? Very small numbers, right? But in reality, probability is more than just heads or tails, right? Like if you're spinning a spinner and there's six, right? And if you want to or, or, for example, if you throw the dice, if you throw the dice, how many possible numbers are there? The, the outcomes. Well, we're throwing twice. If I throw it twice, how many outcomes are there? Most people say what? 36. 12. 36. Most people say 12. But in reality, there are what? 36. There are 36 oh, different possible outcomes. It's just some numbers occur what? Some numbers occur once, twice, three times. Like if you want to roll a two, that only occurs what? Once. You want to roll a three, that only occurs what? Twice. If you want to roll a four, that only occurs three times. All right, there's path. A four can occur as a one and a three, a two and a two, or a three and a one. All right, I'm going to show you. It's really fascinating. And like I said, it seems so easy and so obvious, but it's not. All right, you hear what I just said? When you throw the dice, there are 36 different possible outcomes. Yes or no? Right? How do you know that? Well, how, how, yes, exactly. For those of you guys who are listening, you're throwing the dice twice. So how many possibilities are there? That's right. There are 36 different possibilities. We're not saying that the sum is unique. We're saying that the smallest can add up to is what? Two. Right? So there's one way to get a two. There are what? How many ways to make a three? 
two. It can be one and two or what? Two and one. How many ways to make a four? Three. three. One and three, two and two, three and one, and so on. That's why they call it, when you throw the dice, that's why you hear them say it's lucky seven. Why do they call it lucky seven? No. Tell me why they call it lucky seven. Well, why don't they call it lucky two? Why? No, they call it lucky seven because seven occurs the most. When you throw the dice, seven will come up more frequently than any other number. All right? Because seven can come up as a one and a six, two and five, three and four, four and three, five and two, six and one. So lucky seven, all right? Now, why isn't four lucky? Right? Because it can only occur three times, right? One and three, two and two, three and one. However, seven is still not that lucky when you try to compare it to all the other possible what? Outcomes. All right? It still doesn't come up the majority of times. Yes? Why seven, not twelve? Well, because how many ways can you make a twelve? One. One way. Six and six. Right? A twelve, when you throw a twelve. Oh, yeah, five, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Twelve only occurs once. That's why when you play Yahtzee, why is getting all five die the same number the highest value? It only occurs not once, but six times. Right? Now, how many different ways? How many different ways are there to when you throw the dice three times? How many different combinations are there? A lot. We call that number 216. That's right. So when you throw the dice, there are 216 different possible outcomes. All right. So again, hopefully today I made some progress. Now we still have a few minutes. And so all you're supposed to do now for the last 10 minutes is please, please do me a favor. Look over your test and try to make the corrections, even if it's just minor. All right. Look it over. Make your test corrections. We have like uh, six minutes left. I specifically left it short so you could look over your test corrections. Lexi, it might take you a little bit longer to do your test corrections. Yes, your homework is just do your test corrections.